There are 81 reasons to fall in love with Turkey and number 22 is Edirne. Edirne, a really surprising place. Welcome to Edirne, a surprisingly wild, fascinating and diverse province in the north of Turkey. Me and my car Limon are ready to go on a road trip of our lifetimes. <laughs> Or maybe one part was not so ready. So, do you want to push the car? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> This is what I was born for. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go. <laughs> <laughs> But ready or not, for everything there is a solution, especially in Turkey. And nothing would stop us from exploring Edirne. Welcome to Edirne, or better said, the gate to Europe. Edirne is a place that borders two European countries at the same time. Greece and Bulgaria. And with such a close distance to foreign territory, you can imagine that Edirne went through a lot in the past, but more about history later. First, I want to show you my absolute favorite place in Edirne. Our first stop led us over 200 kilometers to a nature park called Gökçe Tepe Nature Park. It has an area that is over 5,000 hectares, which means that there are a lot of nature sports to discover. There are also several bays, which I'm going to show you later. But first, let's do the action. Did you know that Edirne is also a great place for scuba diving? Woo! <laughs> Did you know that? No! <laughs> <laughs> It is. Why? Because of the high concentration of the salt and oxygen in the water. There is a big variety of fish species in the water which makes scuba diving very attractive here. My absolute favorite place in Edirne. And who would have thought that Edirne is the place where I would go diving for the first time ever in my life. After a short introduction, I immediately jumped into the water and I impressed the sweetest fish with my swimming skills. And here I was looking for the next adventure adventure in the park back to land böyle one of the activities to do is zip lining you can see the gulf of saros one of the very few gulfs in the world that are south cleaning themselves so the Gökçe Tepe nature park is just two and a half hours from Istanbul four hours if you're driving a Tofaş and it's a great getaway from the hectic city life in Istanbul and really natural place it's so güzel so Joanne and me we are staying at these beautiful natural wood and stone houses there are 30 villas of these here around and they all have a big garden the great thing is that all of these houses are powered entirely by solar energy they really care a lot about sustain sustainability which i think is something amazing and i think <sighs> <laughs> more people should care about that so that's why from the bottom of my heart I absolutely recommend this place that was our time in the park our next stop was a small coastal town called Ennis we need to fill up limon we run out of benzene and Lepege only lasts for 100 kilometers so we definitely have to go back there we are on our way now let's go <laughs> The 
castle of Enes, also known as Ainos, was built on top of a hill at the highest point of the area and it was also called Acropolis in ancient times. Back in the days, the entire hill was surrounded by very high defensive walls. So that's not original, but restorated like the original version. The oldest scientifically confirmed settlement in this area dates back to the Copper Age and they think it was built to prevent barbarians from taking over the city. Behind me you can see the Hagia Sophia of Ennis. It was built in the 6th century. Actually it used to be a church, was then transformed into a mosque after the Ottomans came to this area. Unfortunately it collapsed and just last year in 2021 they renovated and we opened the mosque for the public. Should we go inside? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Was ist das Memleket? Almanım. Al Almanım. Alman. Tamam. Gidebilir miyiz böyle? Tamam mı? Böyle. Ah, okay. There is a place in Edirne where you can find lots of different birds, especially rare and endangered species. The place is called Gala Lake Nature Park, we are here right now, it's extremely windy. We saw some pelicans, we saw an eagle, we saw a lot of different kind of birds and now we are moving on to Edirne city, which is two, two and a half hours from here. Welcome to Edirne! <laughs> this city was once the capital of the Ottoman Empire from 1636. No. <laughs> Edirne became the capital of the Ottoman Empire before Constantinople did in 1369 to 1453. <laughs> There are a lot of historical monuments to be found in the city, like these beautiful stone arc bridges. Behind us is the Tunja River and this is the Tunja Bridge. <laughs> it is very early, 8 a.m. and we got a map with all the attractions in Edirne. There are over 72 touristic points in Edirne. We are probably only going to visit like 15 of them, which is already a lot. We have today and tomorrow. And today we are going to the main sites like the river, the train station, the mosque, uh, the churches and synagogues. And of course we are going to end at the bazaar. Yes, for some shopping. Wait. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> It is known that Edirne was founded by the Thracians who came here from Central Asia and settled down in the ancient age. The Thracians were actually Indo-Europeans and they didn't only had one single kingdom but they actually went to many places like Serbia, Southern Russia and also this western part of Turkey. <laughs> During the Alexander the Great era, the city of Edirne was re-established and reconstructed after the Empire Hadrian. That's why Edirne before was called Hadrianapolis. So we are now in the room where Atatürk used to stay. He really liked Edirne, he came here four times. And now we are in the room where Atatürk actually stayed. Um, they have still the original furniture over here. So this is the original bed and the original mirror that was from the time when Atatürk used to be here. This building is also over 120 years old and it's one of the unique buildings in Turkey.
Welcome to Francis Food Review. Cava Gier is one of the most famous foods that you have to try when you are in Edina. We heard that one of the best places is actually where we are, where we are right now. Bari Bay Tari Giaji. Evet. Bir portion. Aire Aire. Bir bir. Tamam. Tamam mı? Ama acısız. O yanında burada. Ha tamam süper. O da burada. Okay. Bu iki tamam. Süper. Tamam. Hey John Liz. <laughs> so this is a spicy thing? Yeah, this is spices. Wow. But the GI will probably not be so mm. spicy. Let's see. Like hopefully it is. Yeah. The chocolate. Afiyet olsun. Bu ne? Bu yoğurt. Bunun ah. içerisinde manda sütü de var ama çok özel bir yoğurt. Okay. Buraya ait. Tamam. Yöresel. Anladım. <laughs> Teşekkür <Anladım. laughs> ederim. Interesting. Yeah. The taste of yogurt with liver. Mm. A new thing. Hadi bakalım. Teşekkürler. Nasıl yiyoruz? Nasıl yiyoruz? Nasıl çatal alıyorsun sonra biberden. Ve... Biber acıdır ama yoğurdu da yiyorsun. <gülüyor> oluyor. Yandıktan sonra yoğurdu yiyince Aa. hiçbir şey kalmıyor. Hot. Lezzetini öyle alırsın. Ve yoğurt ile? Yoğurt. Yoğurt. Bir de kuru biberi. Böyle. <gülüyor> ama biraz yavaş. Tamam. Heh. Bu? Evet. Yoğurt ile? Yok, ilk ye onu. Sadece bu. Ye. <gülüyor> Sonra kuru biberden bir tane. Hı hı. Isır ondan. Hı. Isır. Çok Şimdi yoğurt. Hı. Oldu mu? Hı hı. Biber mi yedin? Hı hı. Azıcık böyle önce bir dene. Hı. Ondan sonra. <gülüyor> Ama, Ama bak, harika. Bu, bu ne biliyor musun? Hı hı. Biz bunu böyle anlatırken diyoruz ki dünyanın en tatlı acısı. Ha. Ama acılı. Acı ama biraz sonra <gülüyor> yok. <gülüyor> tamam. <Yes>. Teşekkürler. <gülüyor> I love that it's actually fried liver. It's fried? Yeah, yeah. it's my first time trying fried liver. Wow. <gülüyor> mm. Ooh, nice. <gülüyor> I really like the combination with the yogurt. And that it is fried yeah. because I'm also not a big liver fan. I don't like the natural taste of liver, but after it's fried, it has kind of a yeah. more neutral flavor. I really like that. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a big plus point for the Tavagia in Edina. Afiyet olsun. Afiyet olsun. <laughs> and while eating so innocently my liver plate, I had no idea that my biggest dream would come true. Becoming a Gia Ustasa. I'm a Gia G now. Tavası var. Tavası var. Ciğeri var. Ciğeri var. Yanında da. Yanında da. Biberi var. Biberi var. Abi güzel edinem. Abi güzel edinem. Sende daha neleri var? Sende daha neleri var? Edin neye gel? Edin neye gel? Ciğerimi ye. Ciğerimi ye. Oh teşekkür ederim sağ ol. Afiyet olsun. Afiyet olsun. <gülüyor> We are now at the complex of Sultan Bayezid II, which is a very big health museum and institution, the biggest of its kind in whole Turkey. It was constructed in 1488. It was founded by Sultan Bayezid II. The Darushifa, which means hospital, had lots of different functions, but in the end it turned into a psychiatric institution. The notable thing about this psychiatric institution is that the patients here were not tortured or burned like in any other parts of the world at this time, but they were actually healed with the sound of music, water, sounds, 
and smells. So this was a very new approach for that time and something very special. This hospital served for more than 400 years continuously. That's why the medicine here was very advanced. But unfortunately, during the Russian-Ottoman War in 1877 to 78, it was closed and this place became abandoned and the mentally ill were really isolated here. The Trakia University in Edirne started the restoration of this place and turned this whole complex into a museum in 1997. The museum here consists of several rooms. There are endless valuable information available about medicine in general and also about the Ottoman history of medicine and health. So apparently right now we are at the world's biggest pen here in Edirne. I couldn't believe my eyes, but here it is. Let me show it to you. <laughs> it is huge and it is right here in the middle of Edirne. It's even got a Guinness World Records certificate. So it must be legit. 600 kilograms of fried liver was cooked in this pan to receive the Guinness World Record. It's just unbelievable. I didn't know that these kind of things exist in Edina, but it is a crazy place. Here we have the direct comparison between Joanna and the biggest pan in the world. Hello, Liza. How do you do? <sighs> so nice here. So beautiful. We just came to a place, it is basically not far from the city center, but it feels like you're completely cut off from all this noise from the city. It's called the Edirne City Forest. It's a very green place, big area, and there are also a lot of different kind of trees here. So yeah, it's really like a little nature park in the city and it's a very popular place, especially on weekends. I just want some chai. Yeah, it will be perfect for chai here. Hadi, bu, hadi bakalım. Hadi bakalım chai var mı? In Turkey, you don't look for chai, the chai looks for you. You see how easy it is to get chai? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like this. Yeah, exactly. Ah. <laughs> Mükemmel. Harika. Harika. <laughs> okay, Joanna. Yeah. Nassesin. Iyum. <laughs> <laughs> what did you learn in one week? Çok güzel. Afiyet olsun. Afiyet olsun. Mükemmel. Harika. Su. Ekmek. Yemek. <laughs> yeah, mec. And you name me Vishe. Gurushurus. Gurushurus. Evet, yo, kair. Hayu. Should we go to the next place? Yeah. Hadi gidelim. Hadi gidelim. We are now at not only a very beautiful but a very historical place. The Kara Art train station. This train station was built in the 1870s because the Orient Railway Company built a railway all the way to Vienna in Austria. And they built this on the other side of the river because it was easier to access. But in 1971, a shortcut from Edirne to the Bulgarian border was built and this train station kind of got abandoned. It was not in use anymore. That's why it became part of the Trakia University, which hosts the faculty of fine arts today. Next to the train station, there's also an old war locomotive and it is so special because it was built by the Germans <laughs> over 100 years ago in 19. 10, only 29 of these locomotives exist today. This place has a very special story. That's why we are going to the monument of Lausanne now. You ready for it? Yeah. <laughs> So here we are at the Treaty of Lausanne Monument, right next to the Kara Arch train station. It was built in memory of the Treaty of Lausanne, signed 
on July 24, 1923 in Lausanne, which is located in Switzerland. Edina was occupied by the Greeks in 1920 and after the war the Treaty of Lausanne was signed in 1923 and this peace treaty ended the conflict between the Turkish nationalists and the allies that were part of this war. In line with the treaty, the Turkish-Greek border was redrawn and the area of Karaat was given back to Turkey. In Edirne there are two Bulgarian churches. We are in one of them right now, the bigger one. It is located in the city center of Edirne. And the interesting thing about border cities like Edirne is that there are a lot of different parts of religion, culture and architecture all combined in one place. So all these different parts from the surrounding regions and countries can be found in Edirne. In Edirne you can find different religions living next to each other, 13 synagogues and over 150 mosques. The Bulgarians have lived in Edirne under the rule of the Ottoman Empire for over a millennium. Lots of churches and synagogues unfortunately were destroyed or turned into mosques. Nowadays there are two Bulgarian churches left here in Edirne and they are in a very good condition. Like this church is open to visit and it has beautiful artifacts from the Christian religion. It is a very colorful church and it also has lots of wooden elements in here. Did you find some Bulgarian friends? Yes, I just found this uh, lovely elderly woman that explained to me that this is actually maintained by both Turks and Bulgarians. So yeah, I'm so glad that um, you know they are working together to make this beautiful place even more beautiful. The Selimir Mosque, Edirne's most important landmark, was constructed in 1575 and designed by Turkey's greatest master architect, Mimar Sinan. He said that this is my masterpiece. It has the highest minarets in all Turkey. The minarets are over 70 meters high, which means it is even higher than those of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. The mosque is a great example of marble and Turkish handicraft, so we're really excited to go inside and check out how it looks from inside. Let's go! We are inside the mosque now. It is very beautiful, but there is a lot of construction going on here. As you can see over there, it's all covered up. now at one of the historical bazaars in Edirne. There are actually three different bazaars. This one is called the Aras Asta Bazaar. It's called the Arasta Bazaar. I found the Edirne expert. Edirne professional person. Ah. Okay. Meyve şeklinde sabun yapıyorlar. Hı hı. Gazeteden de kabını yapıyorlar. Hı hı. Geri dönüşmeler. Hı hı. Şekilde değerlendiriyorlar. Okay, so they have soup with fruits. All kind of fruits. Very special for Indian. We just made it to the Macedonian clock tower and as you can see it is under construction. We are not able to go inside because they are actually building a museum complex over here. The Macedonian clock tower is the only remaining building from the Roman Byzantine time here in Edirne. 
The historic Grand Synagogue of Edirne was abandoned and ruined. After 46 years it was restored and opened again for the public in March 2015. This synagogue belongs to the Jewish minority here in Edirne and it's actually the biggest synagogue in whole Turkey and the third largest one in Europe. There is the Kakava festival happening. We're super excited for that. <laughs> and the Kakava festival is basically a huge festival in Edirne. Thousands of locals and also foreigners come here to attend this festival to celebrate the gypsy culture. And it consists of jumping over fire, making wishes, at the wish tree and so many more things so we're super excited we have absolutely no expectations and we'll just go there and see what happens yeah <laughs> it is extremely crowded the festival is happening at a in a huge area called the tarihi sarayichi so we are here right now and they're selling all kinds of stuff they're dancing people are really happy here where's your anna Oh my god, I shouldn't lose you, Anna. There she is. Oh, that's really difficult here. <laughs> yeah. Merhaba, biz Bursa'dan gelen bir ekibiz. 30-35 kişi kadar her sene Kakava'da, burada Hıdrellez ruhunu, bu eğlencenin ruhunu, bütünlüğünü, güzelliğini yaşamak için özel kıyafetlerimizi diktirip farklı farklı arkadaşlarımız da buraya sadece ve sadece eğlencenin doruğunu tutmak için geliyoruz. Burada İdrellez kutluyoruz. İdrellez şenliklerimiz var, Kakava şenlikleri diyorlar. Daha çok Çingene ve Roman vatandaşlarımızın böyle şenliklerle kutladığı, coşkuyla kutladığı güzel bir gün. 2022 Edirne yılı Edirne'ye hepiniz hoş geldiniz. Joanna and me had an absolute amazing time in Edirne. It surprised us with a lot of things and activities that we would have never imagined before coming to this place. Edirne, not very far from Istanbul, so 100% see you again. That's it from Edirne. See you next time in Zonguldak. <laughs>